welcome to our fall kickoff. So the main purpose of this call, like I said, is to just introduce to you guys some changes, some updates, and give you some clarity on the coaching program. The first thing we're gonna be talking about, because we always like to start with celebration, is our successes. We had a big summer, guys. I know people took time off. I know people were, were doing other things. And I do apologize for you guys in growth. We don't have a list of your production. I know there were some big successes in that group as well. Um, however, we only track the PC stuff. So this is everybody in PC that we wanted to celebrate. So those of you that are in growth, I know that some of you had some great success and Dylan, Stevie, I'll have you guys kind of chime in with people we can acknowledge there as well. We do want to acknowledge you. We're not forgetting about you. Um, but first and foremost, congratulations to Sam for his first listing and purchase, Dwight for his first sale and closing, Josh Carducci for his first sale and closing, and he's also capped as of September, which is amazing. Um, he got his license in April, so that's a huge success for him. We're very excited. Elena and Terrace had their first sale and closing. Alex Campbell had her first sale, closings, and capped. Um, Bella had her first sale. Mohan, first sale and closing. Kevin, first sale. Oops. Um, and then let me see my bar is in the way here at the bottom one second. There we go. Farhan first sale and Olga first sale and listing. So congratulations, guys. We know that for a lot of you, you know, it is early in your career. We're excited to see you getting into production as quickly as you are. We know some of you guys are working on some of your first deals right now as we speak. So of course, we will celebrate those as they come in and move forward. Um, on our Facebook page, on our Instagram page and things like that. And we are going to work harder to acknowledge and celebrate your guys' successes and share them with the group as well as we progress. So great job to everybody. Um, I know Irene also had a listing deal that she did. So amazing job, Irene. Dylan or Stevie, anyone else you can think of that um, had some first big successes that we didn't get to list here? Uh, it's funny, off, off the top of my head, I was thinking about Irene as well. I'm sure there's some others that, that we've missed here in our growth program. Uh, but in terms of uh, breaking through and getting that first condo deal done, uh, you know, hats off to Irene uh, as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Irene's was, uh, Irene's was a difficult one too. So I think yeah. that's why it probably stands out because it was a topic of conversation quite a few times because it, it, it was difficult. So yeah, uh, yeah that's kind of one that's standing out in my head as well. I love it. Anybody in the call have any other um, any other ones that they know of that they want to shout out before we move on? It seems like a quiet group today. I think you might have to just uh, yeah. keep moving along. <laughs> I, was waiting, I was waiting for Jane to throw something out there. But <laughs> she's driving, so it's fine. And actually, one of the things I would love to acknowledge and congratulate too um, is for Stevie. I was chatting with an agent last week and got some exceptional feedback about how well she has been transitioning into her coaching role and how much of her confidence has grown in the last four or five months and how much she is giving back to the agents and supporting them and that they're recognizing it and extremely grateful. So Stevie, big wins to you as well for your progress and just your passion that you're giving back to the agents. They're, they're feeling it and we're hearing that and that's, that's amazing. So thank you so much for what you're doing every day as well. Oh, thanks so much, guys. Thank you're you. Welcome. Glad to hear that. Yeah, it's always nice, right? Um, okay, so here we go. We are going to roll in. Actually, sorry, <laughs> I forgot. Before we roll into that, there is one other announcement that we have to make. And this is, for some of you, you guys already know this. For some of you, you don't. And I apologize. We probably should have told you earlier. Um, but I am pregnant and expecting a little baby boy in December. So Dylan and I are very, very excited about that. And one of the changes that's going to be happening as we roll through the next few months is obviously I will be stepping out of being on the forefront of the coaching, even though I know I've already been doing that for the last little while and Stevie and Dylan have been doing amazing. But moving forward, Stevie, Dylan and Stephanie will be the three coaches that you guys will be reaching out to for questions or appointments or anything like that. So um, I'll still be around until December. I'm not planning to kind of disappear by any means. 
However, obviously we're going to be transitioning um, to you guys, having them be your go-tos for all questions, all support and everything like that. So just want to let everybody know, because I know uh, it's a little late. We probably should have done this sooner, but that's okay. Um, that's kind of part of the, the shift that will be coming in the coaching program as well. And, you know, I know you guys are in the best of hands for stuff with all things commercial and all support there. And then Dylan and Stevie with all the residential support. So um, please keep that in mind as we move through the fall market. Uh, all right. So here's where we want to start, guys. What is the difference between PC and growth coaching? Because I know that a lot of the times, you know, on the morning calls and on the mastermind, sometimes you guys are kind of lumped into one group, even though you're at different levels of production and you have different skill sets, different skills in your tool belt. So we wanted to clarify on this a little bit. Growth coaching is for agents who are already in production. Growth agents are expected to know how to prepare offers, present offers, list properties, et cetera. Um, you know, we're not, we're not here. When you're in growth, it's not our job to kind of teach you how to do an offer. We're expecting that you know how to do use AuthentiSign. You know how to prepare paperwork. You know how to broker load a listing. If you have questions about it or you need additional business support, that's what we're here for and for strategy and negotiation and just a little higher level conversation. If you're in growth and you don't know how to do these things, you're going to be expected moving forward to complete the standards of the PC program in order to stay in growth or else we will have to move you to the PC program. We'll explain what that means in a minute, but we just want everybody to be clear on that, that growth means that you know the basics of how to sell real estate. PC agents are learning the school skills and tools required to be an agent, um, which means what we mean by that is you're brand new, right? You need the skills, you need the training, you need authentic sign support, web form support, how to use Stratus, how to do a CMA. You need to be taught all of that stuff. And the PC program is built to teach you that. The growth program is not. So if you think you're in the wrong program, please let us know so that we can make that change for you so you're getting the correct support. First and foremost, um, growth agents get additional business support. They get access to all of the training, coaching calls and the resources. And what we mean by additional business support is that we have those higher level business conversations with them about marketing and about promotion, about building their business, their database, their downlines, all that sort of stuff that we're not really talking about as much in PC. Um, and graduation from PC to growth is not guaranteed. Even though they're both free brokerage programs, you actually need to qualify for growth coaching. You have to be in production and we have to know that you have the skills necessary to be at that level. If not, you can do a second year in productivity coaching if that's what's required. And we have a different structure for that. So we just want to make sure you guys are comfortable with what it means to be in what group and what the differences are. So if you do feel that you might benefit more from one group or another, please reach out to us and have that discussion so we can make sure we've got you in the right spot, okay? Neither, neither one is any better or worse than the other. It's just a matter of where you are in your business. So just let us know. And we'll also flag it too, guys. If we feel through conversation that you're not in the right group, we will have that discussion with you also, okay? So, What's new? Here's what we are rolling out. Um, and there's quite a few different things. So bear with us while we discuss all of this. But these are the major changes. We are now having graduation expectations within the productivity coaching program. What that means is that completing the program doesn't just mean you completed a year and your contract has expired. It means that you've completed a set requirement list, you've attended the appropriate training, you've completed um, the homework we are now going to be providing, including mock offers, mock listings, mock CMAs, having your web forms and your template kits created and set up. You're going to be um, attending a set amount of training classes. We're going to be tracking your attendance. You have to be in production, okay? So if you don't have all of those things checked off and the coaches aren't able to track what you're doing, that's just showing us that you're not completing the program and you're not going to graduate from product from productivity coaching, all right? Um, formal homework, that is something that we're going to be discussing with you a lot more. We've created a... Um, a time-framed platform where there's going to be about 
Um, I'm going to say what there's, there's about 10 to 11 training classes, as well as probably five to well, six to 10 action items that you are responsible for that you have to complete within your year in the PC coaching program. Right. Those are your that's your formal homework. It has to be submitted to the coaches. The coaches have to receive it, review it and give you feedback. We have to see you in attendance at the sessions. We have to know that you've taken and completed and graduated Ignite within your first year. So we're going to be sending out an idea, a checklist of what those action items are so that you guys will have them in front of you. And again, this is PC related. However, like I said, guys in growth, if we notice you're struggling, we're going to add in that you have to complete these action items as well. So you're not removed from it if it's needed. All right. We want to just make sure that you understand that. Um, we're going to be adding in um, structured topics for the weekly mastermind. So every Wednesday we have a mastermind from two to three, and it's been up to this point, kind of an open session question and answer, which has been great. Although sometimes, you know, maybe doesn't bring as much value as we could. So what we're going to do moving forward is have a set topic every week for that mastermind based on what we're hearing throughout the week on our calls, in our conversations with agents. Um, and then the second half of that call will then be an open session for Q&A. And we're also be going, going to be rolling out a separate growth mastermind monthly. So once a month, all of our growth agents will get together. There's going to be accountability linked into that. So you're talking about your numbers and tracking, as well as talking about those higher level conversations that might apply more to your business than where the PCs are at right now. Um, Dylan, Stevie, anything you want to add into that? Yeah, I'll, I'll jump in first. And so the idea specifically around the graduation expectations for our PC agents is, is a little bit more directed at sometimes our part-timers because we know you guys that are full-time, you're showing up, you're doing the work anyway. Uh, you know, that's all well and great. And that's exactly what we want to see happen. And we just want to make sure that we're tracking that. So at the end of the first year, you have all the skills you need to be a fantastic real estate agent. And then we can really focus on your growth going forward so that your production is at the level that you want. And for our part-time agents that have, uh, you know, other work focuses elsewhere that they're responsible for, we know that sometimes it's very easy for you guys to go four months without doing any, any actual production. So your skills are lacking. Even if you took some of the training, you're not doing it on a regular basis. So it's a little bit easier to fall short. Um, and we just don't want you guys at the end of a year of having been in our program that you're not actually capable to do all these things on your own. So whether you're in production or not, or whether you're part-time or full-time or showing up, we just want to make sure that we've verified that you actually have the skills to be a real estate agent going forward. And that's why we're implementing these things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well said, Dylan. Thank you. Um, yeah, that's, that's exactly why that's the whole purpose of this. And it's for us to make sure that we're checking off the boxes of what you need to build your business appropriately. Um, you know, a lot of this stuff we're already doing in a non-formal, non-structured way. Uh, but however, this allows us, it allows you to be more accountable. It allows us to be more accountable. Um, and it allows us to make sure that we're all on track for faster success and, you know, to get you to hit the goals faster that you set when you get your license. And that's ultimately our job is to get you to that goal, right? And so we want to make sure we're doing it in the best, most structured way for you guys. So um, those are the, the newest things rolling out. We're going to chat about them in a little bit more in depth. So one of the big things that is changing is time management and the coach's availability. So the two things we want to talk about is how can we help you and what are your responsibilities? Um, because we find that there are times when, um, you know, we get calls or questions uh, at random times in the evening, in the middle of the night sometimes about things that could potentially wait till the next day or things that you should already know because we have training on it. We have the resources folder. We have the YouTube channel. You have Google, right? Um, and so it's not our job to be here to hold your hand and do the work for you. It's our job to coach you into production and make sure you're hitting the goals that you want to hit. And we want to be very clear about that, that there is a big difference. We don't want to be a crutch. We want to be a support system when needed, when you've tried everything and you need additional help, right? Or you have, we haven't gotten to one of the topics yet and you have a situation that arises where you need support. That's what we're here for. We're not we're not a 24-7 hotline. That's not something that 
you know, exists in our coaching world. And at times we feel that sometimes that can get lost in the midst of us wanting to help and wanting to be supportive. And I think all of us as coaches have that personality of we want to help you. We want to answer your question. Um, we want to say yes all the time. What ends up happening is, you know, we're building the wrong habits and we want to build, teach you how to be resourceful and successful on your own without having to rely on us for every little thing. Um, and we also want to make sure that when you do need that help, we have a great system in place to make sure you get it and to make sure you get it quickly and efficiently when, without being bogged down by other small things that maybe we don't need to be spending our time on. So what that's going to look like um, is that going forward, the coaches are going to be available from 11 to 6 p.m. for you guys to ask us questions. What we mean by that is that from 9 to 11, we are working, but it's lead gen time. We expect that we're going to be lead genning. Dylan is, Stevie is. I, I may, I may not, but I'll be, re, I'll be recruiting. That's kind of my lead gen at this point. Um, but the point is staff as well. We all run our own businesses outside of also being coaches. And as do you as agents, right? We're, we're expecting that you're lead generating every day. That's part of our accountability. That's why you have the tracking sheets in your Google Drive. That's why we talk about lead generation every week. It's how you build your business. Whether you're calling your database you're cold calling, you're doing Facebook ad leads. It doesn't matter how you're lead generating, but that should be designated time. So from nine to 11, you can text us, you can call us, but we're not gonna respond until after 11. So just please note that. From 8.30 to nine, we still have our morning call. So you'll have that window with the coaches, nine to 11, no responses. And then from 11 to six, we are available to answer any questions that you might have. What we do request is during that time frame. Either put it in the group chat or message, text message or WhatsApp message us directly. Please don't call us with every little question because, you know, it is a lot to navigate and manage. And oftentimes we can respond to a text faster than we can respond to a phone call. So text us first. If the coach feels that we need to set an appointment or we need to make a phone call, we'll schedule a time to do that with you. All right. Um, if you call us, we're going to text you back. We're not going to call you back unless it's a set scheduled phone call. So please be clear on that. Um, and the reason for that is that it takes us longer to have enough time to call you back than it does just to reply to a text message. So it allows us to service everybody faster, more efficiently, um, and, and filter through what those questions are. Guys, the group chats, that's what they're there for. That's why we created them. So please start there, put your questions in that chat, mainly so that you get a faster answer and also so that everyone else can learn from the questions you're asking as well. There's like 30, 40 people in, in, the, in the PC chat and there's 25 people in the growth chat. You guys have a huge resource there to learn from each other. The coaches are there and will answer the questions, of course, but utilize that. Don't just keep asking us directly because, you know, it, it could be a bigger conversation if we wanted it to be. Um, we are going to be adding in Calendly into our coaching program, which will allow you to book appointments for production support in advance. Okay, this is a big talking point. We're going to spend a few minutes on this. What I mean by this is that if you're working on an offer or you're working on a listing or you have a buyer consult and you need support from the coaches, um, you can book an appointment in advance of that support of that appointment. Now, we get that on occasion, on the very rare occasion, you might have a small window of time in order to get an offer put together. We understand that that happens, especially in a more aggressive market. That being said, between all of the coaches who have been doing this for a collective amount of about 26 years between all of us, it's not that common that we find out at 5 p.m. that we have to submit an offer by 6 or that at 7 p.m. we have to have an offer by 8. And we are getting a lot of those phone calls. I'm people in stress, getting very stressed out, very worked up because they have a tight deadline, they need to get the paperwork done, and they don't know how to prepare an offer. That's not what we're here for. We're here to teach you those skills, and you're supposed to practice them in advance of having to do an offer with a client. All right. It's not that we don't want to help you. We do. And if that scenario arises and you're showing up and you're present and you're participating and we know how hard you're trying, we'll make a game time decision on that. But if you're not attending the sessions and you're not coming to the training and you're not completing the homework that's required and then we get one of those calls from you, we're not going to help you 
because at that point it's not fair to us and it's not respectful of the coaching program or the time available. So at that point, you can reach out to your sponsor. You can call the broker hotline. You can reach out to support for your ALC mentor. There's a lot of different options, but we have to have a standard of expectations in the program. And that's one of the biggest ones we're enforcing. So one of the other things we're gonna be requesting is that if you do have an offer or an appointment, a listing appointment, and there's paperwork, submit it to us prior to your scheduled meeting. So what it's gonna look like is that you can go into the calendar. There'll be a Calendly link that will be shared with everybody that will allow you to schedule an appointment with a coach. You can book up to an hour with that coach one-on-one -on -one, and it has to be production-based only. Can't be about anything else, just about deals or transactions or listings, okay? Once you have that appointment booked and you know when it is, get your paperwork done. Do the best job you can. Watch the training videos, get it up to date and submit it to the coach so we can review it before your call. That way we can get through the conversation faster, we can guide you faster, and we can see that you're putting in some work, that you're doing, you're putting the effort into the, into the deal. You're not waiting for us to hold your hand and do it with you, right? Um, so how that's gonna work is that there'll be set times when the coaches are available, and those will be in the evenings and on weekends also. They're not just gonna be from that 11 to six period, which is why it has to be production-based and it has to be in advance so that we can prepare. Right. When, when we get calls that are super last minute and you guys are you know, stressed out or upset or frantic, it's actually very hard for us to help you, not at the highest level that we are. And you truthfully, you're not going to retain any of what we're telling you. You're going to go through the motions and then you're going to forget what we talked about and we're going to have a repeat the next time it happens. That's not beneficial to anybody. So in order to make sure that you're learning appropriately, that we're coaching you properly, and that you're actually learning the skills as you go, this will create that environment, All right? If for some reason there's nobody available, which would be highly unlikely, we will make sure someone becomes available for you. But this is why we require notice, and we're asking for a minimum of 24 hours, All right? If there has to be an exception, let us know and we will try and figure something out. But you have to be present in order to qualify for that exception. Now, if you're part time, I know you guys are, might be thinking, well, how does that work for me? I can't go to the classes and I can't do all that. We record everything. And going forward, we're going to be recording the masterminds. We're already recording all of the Thursday training sessions. So we're going to expect that you watch those videos back and then you notify us that you've watched it. OK, and then we'll mark it as complete on your checklist. Once we can see that you've been communicating with us and we know where you're at and what you're doing, then that will be in, allowed as what we're counting for you being present and showing up, right? So that's how we're making that exception when it comes to our part-time agents. Um, and the coaches, we're also gonna be tracking attendance and completion of the required tasks, like we've said a couple of times. So coming to the training sessions, we're now tracking all of your attendance. So you have to make sure you complete every session, submitting all of your mock offers, we're tracking all of that. So we now are going to be able to know by just looking at one document that we have as coaches and see, okay, this person needs a last minute phone call at eight o'clock at night, which is outside of our standard hours. What are we going to do here? How are we going to make this decision? So you have to earn that, right? You have to start putting in the work, showing up and earn the right to get that extra support. Um, our brokerage has tons of different methods of support for you guys. So nobody's leaving you high and dry. You're not stuck. But again, we just need to increase our standard of expectations of how you show up for your own business. Because I tell everybody when we have our one and ones at the beginning that I can, we can only invest as much as you do in your business. So if you show us that you're not invested in our, in your business, then we can't really be that invested in your business either because we've got 10 other people who need us to be invested and they're showing up and they're doing the work. Okay. So I'm going to stop there for a sec, Dylan, Stevie, anything you want to chime in on with that one? Yeah, I'll, I'll jump in first and then throw it to Stevie gladly. Uh, I think just the important note here, guys, is that all of this stuff is being implemented for your benefit. It's going to make you a better real estate agent at the end of the day on, on so many different levels. One, because we're holding you accountable to do the work, take the training, get the knowledge. Uh, and then in regards to having the paperwork ready prior to our meeting, the great thing about that is 
we can help you on everything that you've done so far. Whereas what we find sometimes when we do the meetings first and then you're submitting paperwork, sometimes it takes three or four iterations to get that paperwork correct, especially if you're already frantic because you haven't prepared in advance. Uh, so again, by doing it this way, it's going to be a better conversation with us. We're going to be able to focus more on, hey, how do we actually make sure that our deal is the one that gets picked if we're representing a buyer or how are we getting the most money for our sellers in these situations, as opposed to focusing on little details and an offer or something like that. So again, better serving you and making sure that you're converting business at a higher level, I think is the main focus of having this stuff done. Um, Stevie, anything you want to you wanna jump in and add there? Um, but you guys have basically said it like at the end of the day, it's just, uh, like all this is being implemented simply to avoid that last minute stress call in panic mode, doing an offer or even getting an offer on your, like whatever it is, we're just trying to avoid that last minute panic mode because nothing productive or good ever gets done for anyone in those situations. It's not a good feeling. And like Jen did say, you don't retain any information in those moments. You're just worried about like getting it done in that moment. You don't really end up learning too much from it. And at the end of the day, guys, like we are dealing with the biggest transactions of people's lives. Like you need to know what you're doing and you need to be prepared for the benefit of your client and for the benefit of you being a good agent and not getting yourself in real hot water. Right. So, you know, that's what it's for. Yeah, that's perfect. And, and I'll say just to talk on how Jen mentioned, like we know in advance when we're going to be working on offers and stuff like that. Yeah. Obviously sometimes offer dates get moved up and it happens a little bit more last minute, but you've already showed that client the house. You've already picked up a new buyer that you're working with. You've already know that you've got a listing coming up. So there's lots of time in the weeks and days leading up to that moment of stress that you've had a chance to prepare, whether it's you know practicing a mock offer, or practicing your listing paperwork. We know all that stuff well in advance. So when you, when you see those things coming on the horizon, that's when we wanna make sure that we're getting all of our ducks in a row so that we're ready to go. When that one high stress moment comes, you're already prepared and it's not just getting started. I think that's, that's an important part to look forward to is just keeping our head above water and planning for what the next steps are. And ultimately, when you plan for what the next steps are and you convey that to your client, you're going to close a lot more transactions if they know that you're giving them the roadmap and they're expecting everything that comes. And then when it happens, they're like, hey, this is easy. It makes it so much easier for them to make a decision and do that extra little push, especially on the buyer side, when they need to, to make sure they're the one that gets picked. So again, helping you close more deals as well. Yeah, I love that. That was, that was a great addition. Thank you, Dylan. I know that was one of the points we had talked about in the past and Stevie, same thing. You know, if, if you get a buyer lead and you convert it to a consultation and you're at the point where you start even showing them the first house, start writing mock offers at that point, get your to sign and your web forms organized at that point, assume an offer is going to follow because that's the nature of our business. So be proactive. And a lot of this is about being proactive versus being reactive because we don't make good decisions all the time in reactive mode, right? We have, are much more planned, organized, efficient, and we learn more in proactive mode, right? So start doing the work in advance. Um, all right, move on from that. Best practices. This is just a little list of things we wanted to review with you guys when it comes to doing your part and showing up for your clients and showing up for the coaches, right? If you know that you don't know how to draft an offer and you're working with a client, you should be practicing your paperwork. We just talked about that. Make sure your web forms, templates, and your clauses are pre-prepared and you know where to find them. We get asked this question a lot. Where do I find this clause? Where do I find that clause? As a new agent, that's something you should be training. That's a tool, <clears throat> excuse me, in your tool belt, right? Dylan, can you jump in for a second? <clears throat> Absolutely. So again, getting those best practices for your paperwork and having all that stuff ready. We've done this uh, recently on a couple of our calls, like in on the Tech Thursdays, just making sure that you get your web form templates and clauses all prepared having that stuff all set up in advance makes it so much easier going forward and make sure that you never forget a clause when you're drafting a new offer. It's not just about being able to put in the MLS number and then having a lot of that stuff auto populate into your templates. It's also that all of your standard clauses are already in your template. So you don't need to worry about adding clauses every time you do an offer. Um, a great point here from Jen is 
do not practice on your clients if you haven't done offers yet. And again, we're speaking mostly to our PC guys here, but if you haven't done offers yet, you don't want your first time getting the paperwork prepared to be on a deal for your client. That is practicing in a game time scenario. And we don't want to be doing that, which is why on our end, we're creating all that homework so that we can put you through those moments. We're going to prompt you to be doing that stuff more proactively so that you're prepared for when the time comes. And so we're taking a lot of that burden as well. We want to make sure that we're giving you guys the opportunity for all that practice beforehand. Uh, then going down to, of course, attend all training sessions at least once. This is in specific to the actual classes that we're doing so that you know how to work with buyers, do your CMAs, present your CMAs, draft your paperwork, present your offer, all those classes that we've been doing. We want to make sure that you've hit all of those at least once. Of course, this is directed to some of the part-timers who aren't showing up all the time, and we understand that it's harder to do that, um, which is why we've started recording those classes more frequently. Uh, and we'll be make sure that we're sending them out from time to time as well so that you can watch them. Let us know that you've watched them, and then you've got that opportunity to then do the mock offer or the mock listing and send it to us so you've had a chance to do it at least once. Uh, we're going to be tidying up our resource folder in the coming weeks so that it's easier for you to find that stuff. But there is an abundance of information in there, but we have acknowledged that sometimes it's a little bit harder to find. So we're going to be cleaning that up on our end. But all that information that you need is in there. Our YouTube channel, of course, so that you can watch all the training videos and support. And then just in general, KWRC, like Realty Centers, there is so much support, so much training. Even on mykwrc.ca, there's an abundance of information. So we're going to be here to help navigate you and point you guys to that information. But it's on you ultimately to make sure that you're doing the work and showing up and taking the training. And I love this one the most. When we have those phone calls come in, the coaches are going to be asking you, what have you done so far to solve this problem and find the answer? Because a lot of the times we've had questions asked where it's a simple Google, it's a simple message into the WhatsApp groups, and you would get that answer right away. And so we just want to make sure that you're not leaning on the coaches too much as a, as a crutch, that you've got that ability. We want to train you so that you guys know how to go out and be self-sufficient in the business world, that you're solving these things on your own a lot of the time. Of course, we're here to support you and we're never going to leave you high and dry, but our goal is to make you self-sufficient. Right. And so we're going to be asking you that when you call, what have you done so far to solve this problem or find the answer? Awesome. Thank you, Dylan. Sorry, I had a frog in my throat there. Um, and yeah, the other thing, guys, to make note of is you can search the WhatsApp chats. There's a tool at the top. You just type in your question or type in the word and you will see all of the previous answers that have been provided about the same question that you're asking. This happens to us a lot as coaches. Someone will ask a question. The, you know, there'll be a little bit of conversation. And then like the next day, someone will ask the same question again, which first of all tells us you're not following the chat and that's fine. We get it. You get busy from time to time, but then they ask the exact same question. And if they had a scrolled up about five seconds, they would have seen the answer to that question. So search your WhatsApp, use it as a tool as well. And same with the office Facebook group, because there's tons of times where these questions have been answered over and over again, especially for referrals things like that. They're in the Facebook office, Facebook group specifically. They have tons of referrals in there. Search for painter, cleaner, landscape, or you'll see who people recommend all the time. So just utilize your tools appropriately to save time for everybody and to be more efficient for yourself as well, all right? All right, and finally, the last thing we wanna to talk to you about is the commercial partnership. And I'm not sure if Steph is on here yet, but hopefully she will be shortly. But Steph is our commercial coach. And of course, as your coach, she is here to answer any of your questions that you have about commercial deals and to provide support that you need through the coaching program. We get that. That's why she's here. We know that we're seeing more and more commercial deals come into people's worlds. And we want you guys to be able to take advantage of that opportunity, not have to refer it out, which is why we brought in a commercial coach. But that being said, guys, for most of us, we're not trained to be commercial agents. It's not our world. We don't live in it every day. Um, and what we see happening a lot is people get a commercial lead. They ask some questions, they get some answers, and then they kind of go and try to do it on, the, on their own and they get stuck. So they stop working the client and they lose the deal or they lose the opportunity and they don't end up making any money off of it. So as a newer agent or as an agent who's never done commercial before, and I can tell you straight up, I would do this because I don't, A, don't know commercial very well, which is why I don't coach it, um, and neither does Dylan or Stevie, but, but B, I'm not comfortable 
handling that sort of transaction for somebody without having the experience that somebody like Steph does. It's somebody's business that they're trying to get into place. They're trying to they're trying to get set up. There's insurance, there's legal stuff, there's landlord issues. There's like, there's all sorts of things related to commercial that we just don't deal with in residential. It is in your best interest guys to partner and have a 50, 50 split with Stephanie on these deals. And I know that that sounds like a lot to you guys and you're counting the numbers in your head and you're already like, I'm already doing 70, 30 or 80, 20 with the brokerage and I'm going to give away 50%. But what we're seeing guys is zero commercial deals being completed in the program, even though people are reaching out for help and support, which tells us that just getting your questions answered isn't enough for you to get the deal done. And I personally would rather get 50% of something than 0% of zero, right? I'd rather get the deals done, take a little less money and learn the skills then ask a few questions and then not know where to go and just let it fizzle out because that's that's the pattern we're seeing repeat over and over and over again. So when you are in that situation, please think about that. Please consider that it's in the best interest of your clients and it's the best interest of yourself to have that partner in place. And that's why we have Stephanie in this role because she's experienced She's dealt with a multitude of different types of commercial properties, and she still partners with more senior commercial agents to help her on those bigger deals that she's not used to yet. So she's constantly learning and being exposed to that as well. Um, so please keep that in mind. And is Steph, uh, is Steph on here? I'm here, Jen. Sorry. It's just I've kept myself on mute because I'm just looking at commercial properties as we speak <laughs> out here. So it's like a truck trucking area. I'm yeah. looking for a, a mechanical spot for a business owner. So thank you so much for that intro, Jen. And hi, everybody. Sorry if it's loud out here where I am. Um, I just wanted to, again, introduce myself to you as your commercial partner. I've had a lot of you reach out to me, which is fantastic. And we're seeing a lot of people starting to do offers, but not a lot of people are actually completing the work. Um, again, like Dylan and Jen said, it's really important not to be practicing your offers with business owners, especially because not only are you working with them, but you're working with one of the most sensitive things that they're trying to open as well, which is their business. And they're trying to make money too, right? So I think it's super important for you to partner on your deals. I still partner on my deals with even more senior agents than myself because it's such a sensitive area, especially if you don't know what you're doing. So I'm here to help you. And, and like they all said, 50% of something is better than nothing. So it's an investment for you and your clients for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And, and Steph, what's the difference between if they ask you for support on a question versus if they partner with you? I'm just unmuting again. So okay. I've had a lot of people ask me questions, but it doesn't complete the deal, right? So it's a case by case scenario. It's going from, you know, opening up a, a plaza, supporting a landlord to opening up a nail salon, supporting a tenant. Like these are two completely different things. So I get calls and I get questions asked, but the problem is, is I'm not seeing a lot of people complete the work when they're not partnering with me because it, the question doesn't necessarily solve the entire problem or um, all the questions that are raised by their clients, even after we put forward a deal. So it's not just putting a deal forward and getting it accepted. It could be months and months and months of trying to fill conditions, trying to get these people financing to open up their businesses, uh, getting them with the right lawyers, doing all of the pre-inspections and the contractors that you need to maybe have their business open shop. So it's not just about doing a deal and asking a question like you're, you're partnered with these business people for a long time. It's mm -hmm. not a simple one day solution like we normally find on residential deals. Commercial deals are a lot longer for sure. Yeah, and I think that's one of the biggest key components to note here. There are a lot more moving parts in a commercial deal than there are in a standard tr traditional residential deal, right? Um, you know, as we grow as agents with residential deals, the, the scenario changes, the clients change, but the process st stays relatively similar throughout. With commercial, that's not the case. Every deal is unique. The requirements are unique. The client, the clients and the business itself is unique. So, you know, it is important to have somebody by your side who knows 100% what they're doing, who has done it before, who knows 
who to speak to, the right people to direct the clients to, um, you know, and, and that's what Steph can bring to the table as a partner, as a, as a coach, you know, she can answer your questions and check your paperwork, but, you know, she's obviously going above and beyond to do all of those additional things. And we want to respect and acknowledge that, that that's her knowledge base as well. So, um, yeah, thank you, Steph, so much for, thank you guys and, and having Sorry. The- for the noise. <laughs> it's Thank actually you. pretty good. You're all good. But yeah, we appreciate your time. Okay. You're busy. Um, and guys, you're really considerate, right? It's not always about yeah. the, the dollar coming out of your pocket. It's also about the experience and what that's going to create for you. And like we said, we're not seeing those commercial deals get closed anyway. So what that's telling us is that either you guys are getting stuck and you're not progressing um, or you don't have the skills and the ability to close the deals anyway. So you're not saving yourself money by making the choice not to partner. You're actually costing yourself money. So just change your mindset around that a little bit. Um, and unless there's anything else, Dylan or Stevie or stuff that we haven't covered, I think we're at the end of our presentation or our meeting for today. We're going to jump into the Q&A section. Um, and like they, we said previously, but we'll reiterate it, there will be an email going out that will have a copy, a recording of this session in it so you can watch it back, as well as some of the steps and, and structures, reminders, the link to Calendly will show you what the checklist entails in regard to graduation from, from PC coaching and what that requires. And you know, um, the other thing to mention is we are we haven't forgot about book club for those of us that were attending it regularly. Um, We are going to start it up again in October. So we're going to let you know what that book is. And the book club will be that first Saturday of October, unless it's Thanksgiving weekend, which I can't remember right now, in which case we'll bump it. But um, keep keep a a lookout for that email. It'll be coming to you guys later today or this evening um, with all of this content kind of rehashed for you so that you can get it fresh in your mind. And this is being implemented as of today guys. So, um, you know, we're going to be rolling this out this week. We'll give everyone a little buffer to adjust, but be prepared to get questions or comments back from the coaches in regard to the process and make sure you recognize if it's after six o'clock and it's not about a deal, you're probably not going to get a response from us. So put it in the group chat. Okay. All right, let's jump to Q and a, I, I can see there's a whole ton of messages in the, uh, in the chat. So let me pull that open first and we can start with that. Um, And then we'll go from there. But if anybody has questions that they want to kind of shout out right now, go ahead guys. And we'll, the three of us will answer them as they come up. Yeah. Before we jump into the questions, there are two other acknowledgements that I want to make just from our morning call. I want to give a shout out to Linda and Aileen who have both been killing it in their lead generation these last weeks and have been sticking to it. And when I'm checking in to see how they're doing, you know, and how we're progressing forward, both of them have been hitting their expectations and their commitments that they've made for themselves. And so I want to say hats off to them uh, just in terms of acknowledgement today, because you guys are both amazing. Give you a nice little shout out. Yes. Good job, guys. We love to see that. Um, and we love to acknowledge you guys, which is something we're going to work on doing more effectively as well and celebrating. Um, Michelle, for WhatsApp, in order to search, um, when you open your WhatsApp program, there's actually a search bar at the very top above all of the chats. You can just type in your question there or the word you're looking for, and it will pull up any time that that's been said in any of the chats you have open. So whether it was with you and I or Dylan or the group, all, all will show up there. Oh, Dylan already. Oh, on Android. Yeah, on Android, it's the three dots. Um, and there's a search option there. So depending. No, you're an iPhone, Michelle, you're good. Um, uh, real quick for that one. If you open the actual group chat and use those three dots, then they're there so that you can search just that chat. Or if you just do the, the search icon button at the top for the other ones. Yeah. But if you go into a group, three dots, and then go search it's just below group info and group media, What you can also search as well. If you guys are looking for links, like, cause we always share the links in the group chats, you can search for media photos and links in there as well. Exactly. I love this. Um, Stevie said money, some money is better than no money. And then Michelle said half a loaf is better than no loaf. Mm-hmm. Um, and you guys are absolutely right. It's very, very true. That's, that's part of the premise of coaching is to help you get there faster. Ben just messaged and said, hi, sorry, I'm late. What did I miss? The whole thing, Ben. You missed the entire meeting. (laughs) We're just in the Q&A section, but we will be sending out uh, a recording of the entire thing for you guys, as well as an outline of what we've discussed. 
Bella, um, the mock offers and the mock listings in terms of how we can get help from the coaches. So what that's going to look like is that you can either take your own uh, lead and pick a property and prepare it yourself and submit it to Dylan or Stevie and they'll review it and give you feedback on the offer. And then you can kind of go back based on their feedback and improve and practice again. And we'll track that as a mock offer or alternatively, we will be sending out um, probably around once a month, a listing that you can practice a, a mock offer on or um, a property that you have to list and you can use those cues and work off of that. So either or, and then just submit it to the coaches for review. And then we'll give you direct feedback to help you improve on your skills. And of course, during the, the daytime hours of 11 to six, you can ask any questions that you'd like about preparing that, that you need to ask to the coaches. Yeah, Stevie, I see you've got your hand up. <laughs> um, I was just going to add in on the whole mock offer topic. I was going to say it before when Dylan was speaking, but I didn't want to interrupt when we were actually on it in the slides. But I was just going to say that um, even before, you know, uh, doing a mock, off mock offer when you're required to, if you guys are practicing, which you obviously should be on your own terms as well, I highly recommend practicing like all forms of mock offers. So set up a, um, in your, um, web forms, like a transaction kit, set up one for a condo, set up one, an offer for a well and septic property, and then set one up for just like a regular residential subdivision sale, because it's all different and it's all different clauses, right? So even if you've practiced a mock offer or done one before for a typical residential property, if you then have an offer on a well and septic property, there's additional clauses that need to go into that. I would also even recommend practicing one with, with a pool and without a pool, because mm -hmm. again, there's different clauses that go into them. So, you know, it's not, it's not standard across the board. So have different transaction kits and practice for each scenario so that when it shows up, it's not like, oh God, like, what do I do, do here? Or so that you don't, you know, forget a clause or whatever it is. So I was just going to say that, remember all the different types of transactions and how they differ um, because yeah, it's not all the same clauses. So. That's all I was going to say. Absolutely. No, that that's 100% correct. And same with listings, right? There's, you know, different listings require different information, different types of information. So uh, practice everything so that when it falls in your lap as a deal, you're comfortable or at least more comfortable with it than you would be otherwise. Um, Aileen said, I'm all for the partnership idea in commercial. What about for residential to help us be more effective? And honestly, Aileen, yeah, if you feel that you'd like to partner with one of the coaches on a deal, as opposed to just having the standard coaching support, that's absolutely something that's available to you. And you can connect with Dylan or Stevie and have that conversation. It would be a 50-50 split, the same as the commercial would be, but they would be with you for the entire process from start to finish. And that's available to anybody in coaching as well. Um, in the run the residential side, if that's something you would like to do for sure. Yeah. Michelle sharing is caring. That's what we should be doing. Absolutely. It's the best for our clients. Thankful for all the training and support provided by KWRC and the coaches. Thank you, Jen, Dylan, and Stevie. I support all the changes. Yes, Linda, thank you. And Aileen, I've never done a listing. Would love to, a presentation. Would love to bring someone more experience with me to nail it and learn how it's done. Yeah, Aileen, if you want to have that coach go with you, you do have to partner with them for the whole transaction, but that's definitely something that is an option for you guys. And we probably don't talk about that too much. Um, but if you do feel that, you know, you're not ready on your own and you have an opportunity coming up, we like to think that we can coach you to be able to do it on your own. That being said, if you still feel you need us, that is always something that you can choose to do 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Our goal going forward is that we're, we're training you more frequently on those things so that you have the skills. And of course, like if it's been a little while since you've been on one and you want to partner with one of us, absolutely. We're open to, to talking about doing that with you guys and we're here to support you. But ultimately, our goal in the program is to make sure that you guys have those skills, which is why we're implementing a more systematic way of making sure that everybody's doing it. Because if the last time we taught the listing presentation course was in July and you've got one coming up now, it might be a, a little bit more daunting to do. Right. So we 100 percent acknowledge that. And in regards to the offers, you know, believe it or not, there's a bunch of you that have taken the initiative and have been sending them us of your own volition. And that's great. We just want to make sure for those of you that haven't taken the initiative that we're all also building in a system so that we're prompting you to send us the multiple the mock offers so that we're ready to go so that will be coming directly from us in like a weekly email where it's like okay here's your homework for this week 
And of course they won't all be that frequently because we know that you're busy and hitting you with one of those every week. We don't want people to fall through the gaps and not do it, but it's going to be something that we're doing much more consistently and, and systematically so that you guys are getting the prompts to do that kind of homework. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Any other questions, guys? Anything anybody else wants clarified or wants to discuss? And hopefully you guys all see the value and the changes we're making. We're not trying to scare you. We are trying to make you better realtors, uh, which is what we're here for and, and why you're here and ultimately to hit your production goals that we know you have set for yourselves and your business. And this is the uh, this is the most effective way to do it. And, and that's practice and role play and, and do things proactively. Uh, Michelle, it's Productivity Success Network. That's the name of the coaching program. And it's also our YouTube channel. If you search that, you'll be able to find videos. Currently, Stevie and myself are going through the video library that we have to catalog what's missing. And we are going to be creating shorter, more quick informational videos on certain things to upload so that you guys can get, you know, that five minute how to broker load a listing or, you know, how to do a quick CMA or things like that um, to help you have more tools and not having to watch an hour class to get that quick answer that you're looking for. So we are going to be increasing the videos there as well. Um, and like Dylan mentioned, we're going to clean up and make that resource folder easier to navigate so that everything is kind of more accessible on one screen versus going levels deep into folders. So we're working on our end to make everything a lot more accessible for all of you guys also. Um, but like we said, please utilize the tools that are there, even as they are now, they're, they're better than nothing. And they're still very good. We're not going to take away from what they are. We just would like to make them better. Um, but the main things are moving forward, just to understand the parameters of the program and the expectations being placed on you as a business owner. Right. We're here to coach you. We're not here to hold your hand. We're not here to do it for you. So, um, you know, if you do need support, obviously, let us know. Uh, but like we said, you know, we're expecting you to be proactive and, and put effort into it before you reach out to us. Okay. All right, guys. Um, well, it is hi, Jennifer. Um, sorry, I have a question. Richard, yeah. Hi. So uh, there are certain goals for, for the PC program, right? In mm -hmm. order to graduate. And for the GROW program, there will be as well certain objectives. Did I understand correctly or? Yes, you did. Yeah. So for the growth program, um, you know, we we there's different qualifications to be approved for it. You're you're in growth. You know, you have to have done some production. Um, you have to have ideally completed the PC program. Some people haven't because you know they joined the brokerage more advanced and went directly into growth. That's fine as well. Um, if you, we will be having our monthly um, growth mastermind going forward where there'll be accountability regarding your numbers and your lead generation, as well as, you know, higher level business discussion. And then if you, if we find that you're not at the skill set that we expect you to be at, to be in growth, those PC requirements, we will apply them to you as well and expect you to complete them in order to continue to stay in growth. Okay, thank you. Okay, no problem. Any other questions, guys? Everybody's good. Everybody's excited, ready to do some homework, I hope. <laughs> <It's good. laughs> yes. we're, we're excited to be here to support you guys. We're really looking forward to taking this thing to the next level. And, and that's why we've been looking at it and trying to figure out better ways that we can support you. And we're just implementing a little bit more accountability on your end that we want to make sure for all the time that we're putting in that you guys are showing up as well. Um, because it, it, it takes a lot on both of our parts, right, to make sure that you're getting into that production. And, and we're excited to get you there. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. It is 1156. We're coming in right under the wire. That was our goal. Thank you guys so much for joining us and giving us an hour of your time today. We really appreciate it. Um, and we're looking forward to what this is going to mean for everybody's business. Uh, please reach out and ask us if you have any questions or you need clarity around anything that we've discussed today. Um, and beyond that, uh, let's just go write some deals and make some money because ultimately, that's what we're here to do, right? So let's go make that happen. Have a great day, guys. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you and congrats. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>